On today's show, we're going to talk about how you can take some of this gear and hook it up to this gear on the cheap. Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live three times a week show here on YouTube at youtube.com slash photo joseph every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9.30 a.m. Pacific, unless I'm on vacation where I was last week and the week before. And the, but we're back. We're back. We're the show's on in full until next week when I'm going to be at NAB, which incidentally, if you are going to NAB, you must attend my wee little meetup. I did this last year. It was tons of fun. This is what's going on. Bring that up here. Um, I'm going to do a meetup on the 10th. That is Tuesday. I probably should put Tuesday on there. It's April 10th, which is Tuesday at 9.30 a.m. Uh, there is a Facebook event page that you can register at. Just If you go to photojoseph.com slash NAB, it'll redirect you or go to my Facebook page, Photo Joseph Facebook page, and you'll see it there. But if you are able to attend, please do. That would be lovely. You can come hang out and... Um, and we'll, we'll do a live show just like we did last year. In that event, I actually linked to last year's live show so you can kind of see it. We have a small gathering. We all get to introduce ourselves and have a little chit-chat live. We're going to do the same thing this time. I have no idea how many people are going to be there because I just created the event. But if we get a whole bunch of people, we may have to migrate from the lobby. They were kind of frowning on us last year when we were there in the lobby. We'll see what happens. But, um, but that's the intention. And some signal. Which, what signal cut out on me? That signal on... Oh, Ryan's telling me the signal on the show. Is that I, Ryan's reminding me of the error of my ways last year where we lost our show partway through 45 minutes and when the battery died. We're not going to do that this time. Okay, so uh, anyway, photojoseph.com slash NAB. If you are able to attend, if you are in, uh, in Vegas for this uh, conference, for NAB conference, then please do check out our little hangout. That would be loads and loads of fun. Okay, next up, um, let's let's get into the gear of what we're talking about today. So here's here's the dealio. Let's say that like me, you used to be a Canon shooter, or I think Nikon. I think they have Pentax adapters. I think there's a bunch of different adapters, but I have the Canon to Micro Four Thirds. I think this comes in different combinations. Oddly enough, even though I know the company's around because <laughs> they just emailed me yesterday to say, "Hey, when are you doing the show?" I'm like, <laughs> "Tomorrow." Go figure. Their website's down, so I couldn't pull up their stuff. At least I couldn't last night. I haven't checked today. Anyway. They make adapters to connect this gear to this gear. Now, you've undoubtedly heard of a company called Metabones. Metabones makes a very, very nice, quite expensive adapter to take your Canon or Nikon or whatever glass and put it on cameras like your Micro Four Thirds. It has glass in it. It does wonderful, beautiful things to your image. It actually enhances, it adds light. It's like the weirdest thing. You get a larger aperture. I don't know how this works. Larger aperture than what it says on the lens is what you get in the, it's crazy. But that's expensive. This is a much cheaper glassless version of it. All this is is an adapter to take this lens and put it on this body. And they're really cheap. They're like 30 bucks. And you can get ones that are just the hole. Or what is probably more of what you're going to want is one that actually has an aperture in it. So this one here has an actual aperture ring built into it. Because what happens is when you connect these lenses to this camera, there's no contacts in here. You lose all autofocus. You lose control over the aperture. You do not have any control. It is just a dumb piece of glass on the other end. And since most, well, at least all of my Canon lenses are uh, electronic aperture, there's no aperture ring. There's no way to control the aperture in the native lens. So you have to have an aperture somewhere else if you want to be able to stop it down. If you only ever want to shoot wide open, then by all means, just get this one, save a little bit of money. But let's be honest, I think, I think this one was $35 or 30 something like that. At that price, just get the one with the aperture ring. Uh, you may as well. You know, only use this if you're like really trying to save money or if you want to have a bunch of them on lenses you know you're going to use wide open. So there's always that, always that option. So this is the adapter. The company is called Pixco, P-I-X-C-O. I've already got links down below to these guys so you can check them out. Um, and, and that's basically all there is to it. So now we enter the question series. We've got lenses here that are, let's just, I'm going to start with an easy one. 100 millimeter f2.8, it's a macro lens, doesn't matter. It's 100 mil f2.8. Okay, if I pick up a 100 mil 2.8 from, here we go. This is my 35 to 100 2.8. 8. So this is 100 2.8, 8. This is 100 2.8. 8. Is it the same or this is 100 2.8 8 on micro four thirds, but that's an equivalent of a 200 mil. This is a 100 mil lens that's made for full frame. Is it what? Uh, okay, so the good news is it's easy. What it says on the tin is what you get. There actually is a very slight magnification factor. We're going to see that in a moment here. I don't know how it's calculated. I'm sure it has to do just with the distance. There's, because there's an extra distance, this extra distance, that's why. Um, but it is basically a 100 f2.8, the same as this is a 100 f2.8. So 
first thing we're going to do is prove that. And this is how I proved it to myself. And by all means, if someone out there says you're an idiot, you're wrong, let me know in the comments or the live chat. But this is what we're going to do. So I have set up, I've got my camera here. I'm going to put this lens on first with, I'm just going to use the basic adapter without the aperture ring. And it's a two-part thing. It just goes in between them. So there's a little red dot somewhere on here. Somewhere, there it is. Put that guy on there. Attach this to my, there's the red dot, to my Lumix camera. Remove said lens cap. And we are now looking at, here we go, let me bring this up. We are looking at a little thing that I set up, a gray card with a ruler taped to it. And I did this so that I could measure just roughly, not like accurately, but kind of measure the distance, the difference between the lenses. So I'm gonna try and center this thing. There we go, good enough. Okay, so if you look at this, you can see we are going from the center mark to the top is, we'll call it three inches in the bottom. It's basically three inches top to bottom on each on each end, so six inches total. That's, that's rough, it's not exact, but it's close enough what we're doing here. Okay, so that's what we have. It's, we're literally pointing at a gray card with a ruler taped to it over there in the corner. Okay, now let's look at exposure. So this is a 100 f 2.8. I also have a 100 f 2.8 here. So we're going to see if the exposure is the same and the focal length is the same between these lenses. Okay, so back to this view. I am in uh, aperture priority. The Remember, the camera does not know what the aperture is. You can see in the bottom left corner, it says 0.0. .0. That is the aperture that it is reading. It does not read the aperture, so it doesn't know what it is. My ISO is currently set to 800, the thing sitting in a shadow. And if I push the shutter halfway, we're getting a shutter speed of a 50th of a second. So again, bottom left, you can see the 50 that showed up. That is my shutter speed. I have this on spot metering, and let's just put it and make sure that's centered. Uh, we're going to put the spot, move that over. There we go. So the spot is in the top right quadrant. You see that little tiny greenish blue crosshair in near the center of the screen? That is showing what it's spot metering on. It is metering on the top right quadrant of that little circle. So I'll make sure that I always point at the same spot. So again, we are looking at an exposure of, okay, now at 1 60th of a second when I've got it positioned up there. Okay, so f2.8, 100 millimeter lens, ISO 800, 1 60th of a second. Remember the 1 60th? That's the important part here. Now I'm going to take this guy. Oh, and the three inches top and bottom. So let's take that off. Let's put on the 300-2.8 and, or the 100-2.8, sorry, 35 to 100-2.8. Um, I am going to, there we go, come back to this. Well, so this is a zoom lens, so we're going to put it at 100. So at 100, we can see it's just a little bit wider. So this is where I was saying we're, we are getting a slight crop factor. I call it like a 1.1 crop factor. I don't really know, but it is a slight crop factor. Now this lens, let's set this to f2.8. So that's at f2.8. Our ISO is still at ISO 800. And let me put the center spot metering on that little gray spot right in the same one. There we go. Close enough. And it is an 80th of a second. So we're getting a very slight difference. That's pretty slight. I mean, that is that is minimal. So a little bit of a light loss, I suppose, um, a little bit of a crop factor in, but it is essentially the same lens. It is essentially what it says on the box. Okay, so that's cool. So now let's compare Boca because this is a really important one. Um, actually, no, before we do Boca, no, no, let's do Boca next. Let's do Boca next. So let's compare Boca. I'm going to use the closest lenses that I have in a really shallow depth of field space, which isn't exact, but it's gonna be close enough what we're doing here. I have here the Canon 50 millimeter F1.2. This is a gorgeous lens, a very expensive, very nice lens. Like this guy a lot. Then I have my, where is it? The Noctocron, somewhere here it is. The Noctocron 42 and a half millimeter F1.2. So definitely a difference in focal length there. Not a huge amount, but a little bit of a difference. The aperture is the same, 1.2. So let's now, reset this up. I'm going to put the, this time I'll use the one with, actually, yeah, I'll use the one with the little aperture ring in it. We'll go ahead and put that on here. I'm going to make sure that it's left wide open. Slap that guy on there. Put that on here. Find the red dots. Marry those up. There we go. i make sure that my aperture is all the way open. It is. And now I'm going to, let's go back to this view. I'm going to recompose a little bit. And you'll see that I have taped to the wall behind a little color chart here. Lock that into place. And I'm obviously manual focusing here, so I need to, I'm gonna take advantage of focus peaking. I'm gonna focus on the ruler. Okay, so there you can see the amount of bokeh we're getting. We are again wide open here. Um, I'm, not, I'm not caring about exposure at this point. We're just looking at the depth of field. And so now what I'm gonna do is take a picture. I already have this thing tethered to my Mac. Hopefully this is all still active and working. 
It looks like it is. So I'm going to take a picture. It's electronic shutter because it's tethered. It, uh, because of the HDMI out, it automatically defaults to electronic shutter. That is tethered. Yes, it has shown up over here. Here we go. On the Mac, you can see there's the picture that I just took. So there's the photo. There's the, the ruler that's sharp, and you can see the amount of depth of field that we're getting there. OK, cool. So now we're going to switch to the other f1.2 lens. So that would be my Noctocron f1.2. That's a 42 and a half millimeter f1.2 lens. Get that guy on there. Make sure this is at f1.2. Let's take a look through the lens here. Um, so again, it's not quite as tight because it is, um, it's 42 and a half as opposed to a 50. Plus, we're getting a little extra punch on the 50. But that's OK. We're going to put this, um, make sure we're focused on the, on the ruler there and take that picture. That picture is now on its way over to the Mac. Give it a moment to tether its way over there. And there we go. So there's the second picture. So there is the one shot with the Noctocron. There's the one shot with the Canon. So let me just crop this in just so that it's a little bit easier to compare the, um, the sizing. It'll just be a little bit easier. There we go. So obviously, that's not going to change the bokeh. And now as we go between the two, we can see that our bokeh is virtually identical between them. So with that said, we can say, all right, now we know that by shooting with a Canon lens at, that's a 528 or a 100 f5 or whatever, whatever you've got, you are not getting any uh, focal length advantage or disadvantage or aperture slash depth of field slash bokeh advantage or disadvantage. What it says on the box, what it says on the lens, is basically the same as what you'd get out of your Lumix lens. OK, so now you've got to go, well, do I need one of these? Where'd it go? I don't even know where they went. Do I need one of these? What is this going to do for me? So now you have to look at your lens lineup. What lenses do you currently own for your Canon? And what lenses do you currently own for your Lumix or your Olympus, if you're shooting that, and decide whether it's worthwhile? OK, well, let me go through my lineup. So I have here got all my Canon lenses out here. So this is a 14 millimeter f2.8, a spherical lens, very nice Canon lens, um, L series lens, gorgeous, actually. Uh, 14 mil f2.8. Well, here is my Lumix 14 f2.5. Okay, well, that was that was an easy one. I didn't actually intend for that to happen, but it did. Um, okay, so that's probably not going to use that one. Um, 15 f2.8. Now, this is a fisheye. I'm actually going to put this one on here because this is kind of interesting. This is the 15 2.8 fisheye. The 14 2.8, even though it's wider, is an aspherical lens. The fisheye on the Canon gives you that big fisheye look, which is super cool. Um, this is a 15 2.8. This is a 15 f1.7. So right now, still so far, not really an advantage. I am going to put these on here because I want you to see the difference on this. I think it's kind of cool. I'm going to have a hell of a time finding all the right lens caps later. Let's put, oops, I guess I can't put that straight on there, can I? Probably need the adapter. Let's put this guy on here, adapt that in, put that on here. And let's go back to the view. So here we can see, it's a little bit dark, but that's all right. Um, if we look closely at the edge, let's see here. So this is, what is that? I don't know what that line is. Oh, it's a curtain. So there you can see the edge of a green curtain over there. And on this side, we are just past the, uh, the camera. That right there, where did it go? There we go. That right there is actually the main camera. So from the green curtain to the main camera, that's the view that you're getting with the 15 a uh, 15 fisheye, if I take my 15 Leica f1.7 and put it on here, the view is obviously straightened out because it's not a fisheye, ever so slightly less. The green curtain is gone. However, that edge is, where's my finger? And oh, there it is. That was too high. So I would say there it's there. It was like just barely off. And then we can still see that we do have the camera in view there. So it's a very, very slight difference. But of course, everything is straightened out. So. Again, unless the amount of distortion we're getting from the fisheye is minimal, it's definitely not acting as a fisheye. So probably not really worth using that lens. OK, um, next up, 24 to 70 f2.8. Workhorse lens, 24 to 70 f2.8. Well, I've got a 12 to 35 f2.8 and the 35 to 100 f2.8. Where the heck that went? There it is. So this versus these two. Covers a wider range, same aperture all the way through. This weighs less than this. I'm going to go with these. 
Now, if, if you know if you particularly need this lens or that you own this and don't own these, then that's a great combination. But obviously, this is these two are covering a wider range of glass on there. All right, next up, like I really want to find a lens that I can really take advantage of on here. The 50 of 1.2, we already talked about that. That was initially the lens that I started playing with until I realized, well, the 42 and a half Noctocron is essentially the same thing. So you're probably not going to bother with that. Now we get this one. This, mm, back in the days of Canon, this was my this was my favorite lens. This is the 85 millimeter f1.2. Now for this, I have no equivalent. However, I have a problem. The focus on this is focus by wire. This is not a mechanical focus ring, which means I have no way to focus this lens when it attaches through these adapters. Super bummed about that, right? Because this is the one I thought, oh, that's the one that I'll get a lot of use out of. Can't do it, can't focus, can't use it. So there's no way to focus that lens, so that one is out of the party. 100 f 2.8, that's the macro. We already looked at the 100 f 2.8, um, 35 to 100 f 2.8 even, where the heck that went. I am starting to lose my mind, there it is. Uh, significant weight and size difference. There's absolutely no reason to use this lens. Um, incidentally, if you wanna do macro stuff, I have a whole other thing that I'm gonna be showing you that I just got a uh, little macro, link, macro adapters uh, for lenses that I know we looked at some a while ago, I got some new ones. We're going to have fun with those. Anyway, that leaves me one lens. This one, 70 to 200 f4. Now, this is not the 70 to 200 2.8. That would be different. 70 to 200 2.8 would be pretty special. I don't have that lens. This is the 70 to 200 f4. 35 to 100 2.8, so a very slight overlap on the low end with a faster lens, so we're not going to compare to that. I have this lens, and this is an old one. This is the original Mark I. This is the 100 to 300. It's a variable aperture, f4 to 5.6. At 100, it's f4. This is 100 at f4. This goes up to 200 at f4. This one at 200 is f5. I looked at that last night. So, uh, you know, slight advantage to this one. Is it worth the difference, though? I don't know, especially if you have the newer one. The newer one of this is even better. And then, of course, there's the 100 to 400 Leica. So, what this comes down to is for all the lenses that I have, there's not a single one of them, unfortunately, that I go, oh, I can finally use that lens because the one that I would want to use, the 85, it just doesn't work with that, unfortunately. So that's a bit of a bummer. But then I thought, hold on, I do have another lens that's kind of fun. I think I showed you this once before. This is an old lens baby. This is a 2.0 version lens baby. This is ancient stuff. This now, with the one with the aperture, becomes especially useful. Uh, somewhere along here. Seriously, this has gone insane. I have no idea where that went. Uh, somewhere in here, oh, I think it's, oh, there it is. And it may not be the after one, but it's the one I found first. So this is the adapter. This is the lens baby lens. So now I can have some fun with this. Let's put this thing on here. And now I've got this old school funky Canon um, lens baby lens that I can put on my camera. So let's uh, look through that. And now the way this works is you focus by pulling, pushing and pulling on the front of the lens itself which is just, it's fun. It, you can be cool for still pictures. It can be really fun for video. Let me, uh, let's bring this in close here so you can actually see what the heck I'm doing. So this is what we're doing on here to look through it. You're literally pushing and pulling and twisting on the front element of the lens in there to make it focus or to make it focus on different parts. It's a fun, fun little thing. So I can use that now. Unfortunately, there's nothing else here that I have that I can use. That said, that doesn't mean that's not the case for you. You may have a bunch of great Canon lenses and you're just starting off with your Lumix kit, your Lumix setup, your Micro Four Thirds set, and realizing that there are lenses you don't have, in which case, one of these inexpensive little adapters is going to be fantastic for you. No glass in here, right? We're not getting any optical advantages here. This is not a speed booster, but it is a simple way to adapt your Canon lenses to your Micro Four Thirds gear. Again, I think they make it for Nikon, Pentax, and a couple others as well. So. It does what it's supposed to do. It works. For me personally, I don't have any advantages on here, but uh, for you, you might have it. So if you have Canon lenses or Nikon or any other, and these are useful, scroll down below. You'll see a link to the uh, to where you can purchase it from or learn more from their from the website, from their company. It's pixco.com.cn, Chinese company. And when you order from them, they ship it from China. It's, um, even if you're buying it through Amazon, they ship it from there, but that's, uh, that's just how that works. So you might have to wait a while to get it, but given the price, I think it's worth it. Okay. That wraps up this portion of the show. That's everything I wanted to show you. It actually worked, yay. Uh, we're gonna roll into the Q&A section, so stick around. We'll be right back for the Q&A. If you have any questions about what we've just talked about here, any comments about what we've talked about, or just any other questions in general, you know what to do. Go we'll watch the next segment.